folks, Joseph A. Sabori here. I'm back. Finally, I'm going to be doing a movie review in February. Because the last time I did one was back in January and I only did one for Home Alone Free. Since then I've been working on several commercial breaks from different stations for Network Affiliates other random stuff and plus I was very busy you know the usual stuff and now that I'm already at 1k subscribers for my YouTube channel which is now at 1.0.1k I want to keep this up <laughs> I just hope uh, I get plenty I mean considering how small my channel is <laughs> I know I mean I'm hoping I will be popular someday but you never know so now, I'm going to be reviewing a DreamWorks animated feature that came out on May 19, 2006, and that is called Over the Hedge, which I just picked this up on Blu-ray, as a digital code, at Big Lots for only 5 bucks. I mean, this Blu-ray actually came out um, in 2019, started out as a Walmart exclusive, but then it got released uh, worldwide in June that's cool <laughs> but it's nice that now I finally own it because um, I only had like a DVD copy of it for a while but but that's been turned around so but this is my upgrade even though this cover art isn't the best I mean you see RJ the raccoon and Vern the turtle. Yeah. I mean, it's your typical studio just using all these characters for your cover arts. Which looks pretty awful. I mean, why can't they just use the whole entire game and have it in a much better background? <laughs> but what can you do? And it has all the features, all which reported from the DVD release. And the transfer on the Blu-ray is incredibly solid and stunning yeah because it's it's a digital film um, it was shot exactly how it was I mean it may be like tiny bits of issues but it's definitely a flawless transfer it's the way the film should look and still holds up today anyway it's based on a satirical comic strip by Michael Fry and T. Lewis, um, I barely remembered it, but I think I recall that it was on the Los Angeles Times comic section, you know, where it had, you know, Peanuts, you know, Charlie Brown Snoopy, and all the rest of the comic strips that they join in, even Garfield. So I think I probably saw, like, maybe a little bit of it here and there, but but it's been around since 1995 I just didn't know that this was actually based on that I thought it was just basically your actual DreamWorks film that you know they at least they were coming up with original ideas you know just like Pixar Blue Sky which I know sad to say it just got shut down as I'm reviewing this yeah among other animation studios like Illumination and all. Anyway, um, I saw this in theaters uh, during Memorial Day weekend. You know, after you know being very busy with finals and trying to keep up with all the work I was doing, and um, I, I needed a break, so I, I'm, we went to see the film. I saw it with my mom and my sister at the Pacific Hastings Feeders in Pasadena if you remember that feeder it had only one 60 foot screen very big um, while the rest of the feeders that join in are just either shoebox small screens or maybe one was just a little bit big but whatever that's been shut down in 2007 it's been turned into an LA Fitness uh, after that, so not a trace remains, but I think the building still looks um, pretty much a little bit the same, but just 
upgraded. So, but it's a shame. It really was a great theater. Especially when you get to see these movies for a lot cheaper <laughs> compared to most uh, multiplex theaters. But anyway. <laughs> but the story is about um, a mischievous, a mischievous uh, master thief who's very slick and smart named RJ, the raccoon, who's uh, about to spend the entire week trying to carry and collect all the foods at this suburban town which is over the hedge of of the forest which you have um, all these hibernation animals you know all furry and one a reptile so he, he's working together for them to carry it for this uh, villainous bear and of course it's going to be a lot of trouble than ever before <laughs> okay Anyway, I'm just going to check to see what the Blu-ray looks like. Um, yeah, I already used the code um, as we speak. Yeah, and all these catalog titles of DreamWorks films that are released by Universal. You know, you got Shrek, How to Train Your Dragon, Madagascar, Comfy Panda, Boss's Baby, and that awful Trolls. Ugh, whatever. And of course, <laughs> the Blu-ray. And purple <laughs> or violet in this hard press uh, sturdy case. <laughs> but what can you do? Okay, I already used the code. You know, movies anywhere. You know. So um, let's begin. It stars uh, Bruce Willis, Gary Shandling, you know, who's been best known for. Um, it's the Gary Shandling Show and the Larry Sanders Show. He's a stand-up comedian from Sherman Oaks. God rest his soul. I mean, he was a great actor and very funny comedian. Been in other movies, too, like What Planet Are You From? He was also in Iron Man 2 and Free, and I think, I think he was also in Captain America. I'm not so sure, but I'll look it up. I think it was Civil War. Yeah, he passed away in 2016. Uh, Steve Carell, of course, uh, from The Office. Yeah, the American version, that is. And he was also in Bruce Almighty, along with Evan Almighty, um, among other comedies that he's done. I mean, I always love him. Wanda Sykes. <laughs> yes, you may remember her. You know, always had that particular talk-to-talk, walk-to-walk attitude. Uh, when she had that show called Wanda at Large, and yeah, she's a stand-up comedian. She was in a show with um, Julia Louis-Dreyfus from Seinfeld, of course, in the new Adventures uh, of Old Christine. Christine, sorry, <laughs> that was on the CBS. I know Dreyfus had went on to do the TV show Beep from HBO. Yeah. Eugene Levy. Kevin O'Hara, yes. I mean, both of them were former SCTV uh, veterans. Um, of course, Eugene Levy was in the American Pie movies. Uh, Kevin O'Hara, of course, was in the first two Home Alone movies, as well as uh, Beetlejuice and um, several others. Uh, Shane Bamel, Sammy Kirkpatrick, Madison Davenport. William Shatner, yes, best known for playing Captain Kirk in the original Star Trek, along with the movies. And he's also been in shows like T.J. Hooker uh, in Rescue 911, uh, as he hosts. Avril Lavigne, yes, Avril Lavigne, the Canadian pop singer. This was her feature film debut. And surprisingly enough, she can act. <laughs> But she did sing the song Complicated, which, interestingly enough, they shot the, the music video in Eagle Rock, uh, at the Eagle Rock Plaza, if you saw those numerous scenes, and, and I think uh, other places around. Um, but they shot it there. Um, Omid uh, Jajani, a uh, British actor and comedian. Uh, Nick Nolte, yes, great actor, who's been in movies like North Dallas uh, 40, um, 
48 Hours. He was in Hulk, the 2003 film. Um, Free Fugitives. The, the Prince of Ties. Uh, Blue Chips. I mean, you name it. That legendary actor. Allison Jenny, yes, you may already know her, of course, <laughs> from the TV show Mom, and she's been in several movies. <laughs> I always love her. Great actress. Very funny, too. Thomas Haddon Church from Wings. He was also in the movie Sideways and Spider-Man Free. And Brian uh, Stepanek. It's uh, written by Len Blum, Lauren Cameron, David um, Halston, and Carrie Kirkpatrick. I know Carrie Kirkpatrick, you know, who actually have wrote, joining in with the other writers for the, the Santa Claus. This is his directorial debut, um, joining along with uh, Tim Johnson. Of course, based on the comic strip by Michael Fry and T. Lewis. The movie begins when we meet a smart, slick, raccoon named RJ, voiced by Bruce Willis, who failed to grab a bag of nacho chips from the vending machine at a local rest stop area. So in order for him to grab some more food, so that way you know he doesn't get craved with hunger, he decided to steal the food all the way on top of the cave where a hibernating bear named Vincent uh, sleeps, who's voiced by Nick Nolte. However, when he opens a can of Spuddies, you know, got everything all set up um, through the wagon that Vincent actually stole from all these other, you know, everyone at the picnic area. Um, Vincent awakens, chase RJ around, and the food was accidentally destroyed. So, as a promise to avoid, you know, getting the pain of death, he decided to find a way to replace it in a week's uh, time, but due to his intense frustration, <laughs> he finally got the bag of chips. So he's on his way, on his quest to find everything that he needs to collect so, in order to avoid getting hurt. <laughs> so meanwhile, we meet a blended family of hibernating animals. So in the forest that's led by a neurotic but the leader of the group named Burn the Turtle a reptile <laughs> who's uh, voiced by Gary Shandling who finds a giant hedge that's being built between them and the foraging grounds uh, joining in with uh, Stella the Skunk you know, voiced by Wanda Sykes Ozzy the Opossum and his daughter, uh, Heather, voiced by William Shatner and Avril Lavigne. Hammy the hyperactive squirrel. <laughs> yep, a crazy nut. Uh, voiced by Steve Carell. And the porcupines, Penny and Lou, voiced by Eugene Levy and Catherine O'Hara, along with their three children. Um, Spike, Bucky, and Krillo. Voiced by Shane Baumel, Samuel, Sammy Kirkpatrick, and Madison Danvorport. <laughs> okay. So they all stay behind. And Vern cautiously goes across only to find the forging grounds have been replaced by a housing development. He yeah, actually calls the, the head Steve <laughs> for a while. And just having a very frightening experience, he returns and forbids the family to cross over the hedge. But RJ, on the other hand, actually had solved the whole thing to find out exactly his plan was by feeding the animal the chips and convinced that the humans themselves have better food to collect. So he guides the family into stealing the food from all the humans around against the uh, Burns riches, and that's where they found a hollow log full of it. So RJ plans to steal all of it just to give it to Vincent. I mean, he's been having nightmares about that. But seems everything becomes totally chaotic uh, when we meet um, a 
House an HOA president named Gladys Sharp, who's voiced by Allison Jenny. Um, yeah, and I, I know RJ was already explaining about how the humans got the food and all. <laughs> Great explanation here and there. But then um, RJ's plan was to bring Hammy um, just to pretend like he has rabies. So eventually attacks a, <laughs> a Girl Scout. And of course he, he got hurt. <laughs> uh, then Vern was was about to come to the rescue when all of a sudden he got run over by you know one of those um, those uh, street uh, cleaning the uh, trucks you know where they just clean the pavements and all so he got caught and this is where RJ was a plan to actually steal the entire wagon filled with tons of food and went all the way straight to the hedge and then since then, R.J. suddenly takes over the throne, and they want to be friends with him. They they steal not only just the food, but also stealing all the electronics, you know, such as the camera, the printer, the TV, all which were all <laughs> Hewlett Packard uh, products. Yeah, I'm gonna explain that uh, later. But at this point on, Byrne got very jealous about that and decided to steal the food back to its rightful owners you know just give it back but RJ refused and then that's where it led to more chaos going around <laughs> which had this one funny scene where they're being chased by the dog um, and they're going all the way around through the neighborhood and then next thing you know they got caught into the the propane where this uh, one guy was just cooking a, a barbecue and then it got hooked up straight to the wagon and it just goes up in the air like like it's a rocket. Uh, even had, of course, Gladys, you know, getting all the trouble. You know, especially when her SUV that she was riding on just exploded and all. <laughs> Once the, the wagon just lands. So... In order to actually um, get rid of all the all these animals around, she decided to hire um, an expert, which is an exterminator named Dwayne Lafontaine, who's uh, play voiced by Thomas Haddon Church. Yeah, you know, has like a comb over and all. <laughs> He's like known simply as the Berminator. <laughs> yeah, a nod to the Terminator. He was just going around, you know, sniffing um, a lot of scents that they got. Although he keeps calling the, the turtle an amphibian, but it's actually a reptile. Yeah, that, that's becoming like a running joke here or there. Uh, there's even a scene where, they, where he lost his turtle shell. <laughs> so he's all naked. You can see his butt. Okay. So, anyway... So as they try to continue with this plan to actually be able to get all the rest of the food and set it up to the wagon as soon as possible so it doesn't get, you know, killed by Vincent at this point on. That's where we actually meet um, Gladys' uh, Persian guard cat uh, named uh, Tiger, uh, voiced by Ahmed Dajeli, um, which at this rate they had... Uh, <laughs> Stella to disguise as a black cat so that way you know we can fool him into it and start falling in love meanwhile the rest of the game were just about to continue grabbing all the food that they need to steal uh, there's this one scene in the movie where <laughs> I think it was um, Lou or it could be one of the kids yeah I think it was Lou uh, when they turn on the TV, that's where you saw the THX uh, sound system logo, and it was up at the maximum, and that's where <laughs> all these needles were flying everywhere, <laughs> and and all. And yeah, I mean, they're just hoping they don't wake up uh, Gladys. Uh, but of course, as soon as morning comes, I mean, this is where it continues with 
the chaotic, um, you know, slapstick humor going around. <laughs> Just when the Burminator starts to show up, um, hoping that they'll be able to infest with all these uh, animals, RJ and the rest of the game, and Burn too, and they're about to take them as they could. Well, Stella basically just shoots uh, all the skunk power that he ha she has. <sighs> Sorry, I, I almost said he. Um, <laughs> of course, she's already Gladys has already been skunked, and <laughs> Berminator came around, took all the animals. While RJ was all alone, just stealing the rest of the food, hoping to give it to Vincent as soon as possible. Um, which now they all got upset because they realized that he reveals the truth, and that's where that's when RJ was already being chased by Vincent. Just when he finally arrived, and they're being chased down. Well, he wants up inside the uh, the Burminator uh, van, uh, where all the where Vern and the rest. Uh, got all trapped and they're about to escape. I know they were going to kick RJ out but apparently he got in because he's already been chased. Just goes around and then suddenly hits directly into Gladys house and then this is where it goes for like probably one of the biggest uh, um, turbo um, you know <laughs> exterminating the um, uh, chemical that he, which I guess they hit it, and all of a sudden, you know, it caused like a almost like a nuclear attack or something. So now, <laughs> that's where they're gonna have this big stinging. So already, <laughs> Gladys just pretty much lost all of her hair, and same goes with uh, Vincent the bear, and they're all just getting arrested along with. Um, Dwayne, or about, or at this rate, he was about to escape, but he got caught by the dog because of the uh, the gnome toy. So now everything's all safe. So RJ um, now just joins in uh, with Vern and the rest of the gang. So they became one true family, hoping for their next adventure if there ever was, or ever will be. <laughs> but you'll never know. So they'll continue to steal more food and. As well as all the electronics and stuff, and you know, hoping they'll survive <laughs> for all this. Anyway, <laughs> this was a truly um, very funny movie. Um, has a lot of wacky slapstick humor that's blend in, and almost plays almost like a Saturday morning cartoon in a way. Um, I know they were going to possibly get a sequel to this, but I know seeing that this is the only standalone film we ever got. Um, but I know it's been so long and the way things are going now, I don't, I'm not even so sure how this is going to happen. Because it wouldn't be the same without um, Gary Shandling doing the voice of Burn. Um, now, if, originally this wasn't a DreamWorks film. It was actually going to be produced by 20th Century Fox uh, through its Fox Family Film Division which at this rate, you know, there was going to be later Blue Sky but it got picked up back in 2001 and that's how they were planning on working on it uh, through the leadership of CEO Jeffy Katzenberg you know, who was a former CEO of, of Disney <laughs> so they had to take some time and I, I guess because um, the the one scene with the, the Peltel Turbo, yeah, that was the, the chemical that I was talking about, this very strong chemical, which was going to destroy its satellites, if that was the case. I think that had, that had been cut out, and they had to do some reshoots. It was going to be released in 2005 for its theatrical release, but they had to postpone it to 2006. So just to work things out. I think maybe because it deals with um, the city being set in Indianapolis or so. I don't know. Um, anyway, uh, it did became a hit uh, for a while. Uh, it actually made up to like uh, 300, yeah it actually grossed like around 
340 million out of its 80 million budget. So it did pretty well. I mean, even for its Memorial Day weekend, considering the fact that X Men, um, The Last Stand, and The Vinci Cobra coming out, and then other summer films were too, just to keep up. Um, but it has an excellent, talented cast and even some comedians to join, which is cool because, after all, it is a comedy. Uh, I thought Bruce Willis definitely um, stick right to it as RJ. I mean, has a bit of John McClane in him, but he was having fun and all. Very intelligent. I guess it, you could say it's almost like, like he was sort of playing that character he did in the movie Hudson Hawk. Because he was a cat burglar in that film, so he was also very slick, too. Sort of, sort of a nod to that. Um, Gary Shandling, you know, he was great. Uh, playing, you know, Turtle, who's the leader of of the family. I mean, very neurotic, trying to keep everyone safe and all. Even though people have mistaken him as a amphibian. <laughs> yeah, but it's a reptile. Of course, uh, the best uh, one of them all was uh, Hammy, um, voiced by Steve Carell. You know, he was just hilarious. I mean, he kind of described as like a loyal, idiot savant type, but he's short, but he's uh, hyperactive. Who, of course, there's one scene where, with all the sweets that he eats, you know, he suddenly runs really fast, like he was Quicksilver, <laughs> or the Flash, for that matter. <laughs> You know, it's funny, because there's even one scene where he actually frees time. <laughs> um, you yeah, know, just trying to, you know, <laughs> trying to take uh, and help out all the rest of the, the the animals and all in that one scene. And I thought that was pretty clever. <laughs> um, and yes, he can even burp his ABCs, like... A, B, Z, Z, E, F, G... Oh, sorry. Yeah, I can burp it too. <laughs> but he only burps at ABCs. Okay. Um, <laughs> disgusting. Um, yeah, Wanda Sykes, uh, yep, short temper, very sassy, you know, talks the talk, walk the walk attitude that she has. Uh, very funny. Uh, Eugene Levy, Catherine O'Hara, great together. I mean, of course, they were also in the Christopher Guest movies, you know, even as a couple. Um, I mean, anything with them is just fun and delight. Um, William Shatner, you know, did a tremendous job playing the Aussie, who, of course, always fakes uh, his death. Sort of like a Shakespearean actor, you know, he always likes to fake death. And joins with his daughter, uh, Heather, yeah, Abel Levine. And surprising enough, she can act, and I was surprised how good she was. I mean, she had another film that same year called Fast Food Nation, uh, which was based on a book. The movie, well, I think it tried to be more like a documentary and, and a serious comedy drama type that they were doing. But it was kind of a disappointment compared to the book. I used to have the book, but I, well, <laughs> sold it off uh, because I was studying uh, during my English class a long time ago. Um, Nick Nolte, um, definitely, you know, <laughs> very uh, murderous and very rough um, villain as the bear, Vincent. I mean, he definitely got that chilling voice in him. Alison Jenny, of course, is just as hilarious as the uh, the El Rancho Camelot Estate Home Owners uh, Association, the president. Very disgusted by animals and very strict on all the rules that she makes. <laughs> Pretty much the bitch in, the <laughs> in this entire film. But, of course, I, I love Alison Jenny. Um... Thomas Allen Church, 
just hilarious. Sort of plain, almost like his character in Wings, but only works <laughs> well for for the Berminator. <laughs> so, uh, the animation just looks incredibly stunning, which, believe it or not, was actually um, beautifully rendered by Hewitt Packer Computers. You know, with all the workstations, uh, also processed with. AMD, they could have used Intel, but still. Um, they, they took a lot of work and energy to actually create the animation exactly right. I mean, you could definitely see how sharp, clear, and stunning it looks. It would have been close enough to being in 3D as well. I mean, with those nice uh, shots of the animals and the landscapes of, of the entire forest and and even the trees, the leaves, the hedges, uh, the houses and all. And even the scene where RJ opens a bag of nacho chips and all this uh, <laughs> uh, cheesy dust started to spread around. And you can see that explosion too on, on that one detailed scene. You know, which almost explodes like a mushroom cloud and all. I mean, DreamWorks really can do anything. I mean, that's how sharp um, this animation studio was, and still is, to this day. And I'm glad they're continuing to do more films like this, even in tough times like it. But, but back then, you know, this is back when we actually did have freedom. And we get to go out and, and do whatever we want, whenever we want. And back when I used to go out and buy movies, and... You know, they had, like, a great selection and didn't have to deal with anything going around. <laughs> and get to go out to see movies I mean, and do all those other fun activities. And, you know, I even watch cable, satellite, like, direct TV, dish network and all. And, of course, I started getting all these other players and DVD recorders and all. And, uh, and I know this was during the time when Blu-rays were coming around. <laughs> Okay. Uh, all right. I, I know. I'm just getting ahead of myself. Also has a great soundtrack too, um, which um, the composer Rupert Grayson Williams had done. Um, gives it a rousing score. Definitely has the tone. Um, also had Ben Folds um, singing some of the songs like "Family of Me," "Rocking the Suburbs," yeah, which William Shatner. Um, actually had a speaking part but joins in with the rest um, there's even a song called Lost in the Supermarket which was actually um, a cover version by The Clash I mean if you remember that song <laughs> so it really contributed very well uh, yes they even have video games too that were all on on PlayStation 2, along with Windows, Xbox, GameCube, Nintendo DS, and Game Boy Advance. Um, that was actually published by Activision. They had a lot of three different versions of Over the Hedge, Hammy Goes Nuts. <laughs> That's another one. They even have a miniature golf game, too. Um, they even also had a short film. Yeah. And it did won two Annie Awards, actually three Annie, and it did won two, that's oh, and it did won three Annie Awards, you know, for character design, uh, as well as um, storyboarding, uh, which is Gary Graham who won, and um, directing by both Tim Johnson and Carrie Kirkpatrick, yeah. I mean, while the rest of the awards were nominated. <laughs> yeah. So that's nice. Um, it actually stays true to the source material from the comic strip. They, they really had some of the energy in there and the comic timing. You'll never get tired of it. I mean, it just really fits. So. Anyway, that's Over the Hedge. And I give the movie five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.